January 1917 O Lord, Thou showerest upon me all Thy boons. Now that this being expects nothing, desires nothing from life any longer, life brings it its most precious treasures, those coveted by all men. In all the domains of my individual being, thou showerest thy boons. In the mind, the psychic, and even the physical. Thou hast placed me amidst abundance, and abundance seems to me as natural as scarcity, and does not bring me a greater joy, for often in poverty, the spiritual life was more intense and conscious for me. But I see this abundance very clearly, and my individual being on whom thou heapest thy boons thus prostrates itself before thee in inexpressible gratitude. Thy goodness is unequalled, and thy mercy infinite. 5th January 1917 Love is nothing but the tie that binds and holds together all the flowers of thy divine bouquet. It is an unobtrusive role, modest, unrecognized, a role essentially impersonal, which can find all its utility only in this very impersonality. Because I am becoming more and more this tie, this link of union, gathering the scattered fragments of thy consciousness and enabling them by grouping them together to reconstitute better and better thy consciousness at once single and multiple. It was possible for me to see clearly what love is in the play of universal forces, what its place and mission. It is not an end in itself, but it is thy supreme means, active everywhere, between all things. Everywhere it is veiled by the very things it unites, which, though feeling its effect, are sometimes not even aware of its presence. O Lord, thy sweetness has entered my soul, and thou hast filled all my being with joy. And in this joy I have offered thee a prayer so that it may reach up to thee. 6th January 1917 Thou hast filled my being with an ineffable peace and unequalled repose without any personal thought or will I let myself be cradled passively by thy infinity. 8th January 1917 Thou hast made my heart and mind fall silent, but no voice has arisen from the depths of this silence. Peace alone has reigned. 
a sweet and beneficent guest. 10th January 1917 Dost thou then want to teach me that every effort that has my own being as its aim will be useless and vain? That action alone which has as its motive the radiating of thy grace is accomplished with ease and success. When the will acts in the external life, it is powerful and effective. When it attempts to practice going inwards, it is without force or effect. So all action undertaken for personal progress becomes more and more unfruitful and consequently rarer and rarer. On the other hand, all outer action seems to gain in effectivity what the inner has lost. Thus, O Lord, Thou takest the instrument as it is, and if it has to be refined, that will come in the course of the work. 14th January 1917 May all who are unhappy become happy. May the wicked become good. May the sick become healthy. Thus, was formulated the aspiration within me concerning the manifestation of thy divine love through this instrument. It was like a request, a request a child makes to its father with the certitude that it will be granted. For the certitude was in me when I asked it seemed to me so simple and easy. I felt so clearly in myself how it was possible to grow from joy to joy, from beauty to beauty. Is this not more natural and also more fruitful than always to suffer and toil in an ignorant struggle, unwillingly undergone? If thou allowest the heart to blossom freely at the touch of thy divine love, this transformation is easy and comes of itself. Wilt thou not grant this, O Lord, as a pledge of thy mercy? It is with the confidence of a child that my heart implores thee this evening. 19th January 1917 And the hours pass, fading away like unlived dreams. 23rd January 1917 Thou didst fill my being with so complete, so intense a love and beauty and joy that it seemed impossible to me that this would not be communicated. It was like a glowing hearth whence the breath of thought wafted far many sparks which, entering the secrecy of men's hearts, kindled other similar fires, fires of thy divine love. O Lord, that love which impels and draws all human beings irresistibly to thee, O my sweet Lord, grant 
that this may not be only a vision of my enwrapped consciousness, but indeed a reality effectively transforming all beings and things. Grant that this love, this beauty and joy which flood all my being that is hardly strong enough to bear their intensity may also flood the consciousness of all those I have seen, all those I have thought of and all those also whom I have never thought of or seen. Grant that all may awake to the consciousness of thy infinite bliss. O oh, my sweet Lord, fill their hearts with joy, love and beauty. 25th January 1917 O radiant love, who fillest all my being and makest it festive, art thou received, art thou given? Nobody can say, for thou receivest thy own self and givest thyself to thyself, being sovereignly active and receptive, at once in all things, in every being. 29th January 1917 In the world of forms, a violation of beauty is as great a fault as a violation of truth in the world of ideas. For beauty is the worship nature offers to the Supreme Master of the Universe. Beauty is the divine language in forms and a consciousness of the divine which is not translated externally by an understanding and expression of beauty would be an incomplete consciousness. But true beauty is as difficult to discover, to understand and above all to live as any other expression of the divine. This discovery and expression exacts as much impersonality and renunciation of egoism as that of truth or bliss. Pure beauty is universal and one must be universal to see and recognize it. O Lord of Beauty! How many faults I have committed against thee! How many do I still commit? Give me the perfect understanding of thy law, so that I may not again fail to keep it. Love would be incomplete without thee. Thou art one of its most perfect ornaments, Thou art one of its most harmonious smiles. At times I have misunderstood thy role, but in the depths of my heart I have always loved thee. And the most arbitrary and radical doctrines could not extinguish the fire of worship which from my childhood I had vowed to thee. Thou art not at all what a vain people think thee to be. Thou art not at all attached exclusively to this or that form of life. 
it is possible to awaken thee and make thee shine in every form. But for that one must have discovered thy secret. O Lord of Beauty, give me the perfect understanding of thy law so that I may no longer fail to keep it, so that thou mayest become in me the harmonious consummation of the Lord of Love.